Hi, today we are going to explore the history of witch bottles. The idea is to go back in history and see how people used to make witch bottles and for what purposes they were used and today I'm focusing on Britain but we do have evidence that it was used in other parts of the world as well. So what are witch bottles? The term witch bottle appeared in a catalog for the Saffron Walden Museum in Essex in 1845 referring briefly to an item on display and after a long time no one knows what exactly that item was a witch bottle was usually created to fight off maleficent magic so it was used for protection against witchcraft it would contain at least three ingredients which are a bottle urine and sharp objects which may include needles pins or thorns the witch bottle was then hidden somewhere in the household witch bottles had been reported for hundreds of years but no serious attempt has been made to examine them until the 1950s in the 50s we have ralph merrifield he was an archaeologist of ritual and magic so after his work we get four types of evidence the first type of evidence would be the recipes i mean written details on the creation of witch bottles we don't know how often these prescriptions were used and it could be that these written fragments were a part of a bigger tradition that was either unwritten or lost the second one we have have the witches trials and we know here that those conducting the trials rarely pr prosecuted people for the creation of these bottles and it's because people would use them to protect themselves against magic but we do have a few actual trial records describing them but it could be that this information is not very accurate it depends on how much the author who wrote these scared the third one we have the accounts of folklorists in the 19th and early 20th centuries describing witch battles beliefs and objects the only concern here is that they likely substitute the word urine with water and the reason that they did that is their readers sensibilities for the fourth one, we have the surviving witch bottles uncovered at sites on two continents, mostly over the last century. These artifacts are some of our best indicators of actual practice, but they themselves do not constitute a complete record of the practices. Because sometimes people would even throw these bottles in the fire and by doing so it would be hard to tell if it was an ordinary broken glassware. Also any rituals, timing or chanting, even if it was written, this would leave no archaeological trace. The first bottle was analyzed in 2009, but some substances including in the bottle might not be detectable due to the material not surviving or the lack of testing for detection. Origins of the witch bottle Dating to the last decades of the 16th century, the author of Folger manuscript wrote the instruction of a working in which urine and iron objects are boiled in a pot or pan and this is what he wrote take the urine in the party that is bewitched and seed it in a pot close covered then take a pigeon harp and stick five needles in it and set with the urine till urine be consumed saying as above written then the practitioner would recite a chapter from the gospel of saint john three times and then another chant the interesting part is using an animal heart that is absent or replaced with a cloth in many later accounts there is another similar practice from 17th century that includes sulfur urine three needles you would boil everything while chanting it is a long chance so i'm not gonna say it but i will link a book where you can find all this information another similar practice found in reverend george giffords a dialogue concerning witches from 1593 a local magical practitioner would boil nails and it is said that within a few days the witch would come with her face scratched an iron bolt was found in a stream near northampton 
containing bent pins, the item could date between 16th and 18th century. In Germany, 1562, a clergyman boiled his patient's nails and urine to stop witchcraft. So we can find many similar practices throughout the history involving boiling urine, needles, nails. They will also add hair and even animal parts like pigeon part and roaster. Then they would burn the remains in the fire and these practices would be done for protection against witchcraft and magic. Also there is another in 1654, Anne Green accused, which was a healer that boiled urine with a hair to treat headache. The appearance of witch bottles. The most compelling evidence of witch bottles appears during the 17th century. We have the famous Glanville's account. He had been staying in Suffolk around 1640 when he learned of, of his landlady's brush with witchcraft. So there is an old man that traveled a lot and one day he asked someone how he was doing and he said that his wife was haunted with a thing in the shape of a bird that would flutter near to her face so she couldn't rest. The old man advised him to take a bottle and put his wife's urine in it, adding as well pins, needle and nails, and seal good the bottle and then set the bottle on the fire. The man did what the old man said, but the bottle was sealed with a cork and when he put the bottle on the fire, the cork bounced out and everything that was inside that bottle flew up and his wife's condition stayed the same. The man told the old man that it didn't work and he told him to make the same bottle but this time to bury it instead. He did what he was told and his wife was finally recovered. But then a woman came and said that they killed her husband and they said that they didn't even knew her husband. But then the woman said that this is what her husband told her on his deathbed. At the end they did understand that her husband was a wizard and had bewitched this man's wife and that the working that they did in order to save this woman was the death of that wizard that had bewitched her. So this account presents both boiling and burning of witch bottles. Then we have many examples of witch bottles made out of stoneware jugs which with round bodies and thin necks, the later of which was often decorated with a bearded man's face. These jars was usually used to transport beer and have been nicknamed Bellar Mines. Before these jars had been used as witch bottles, they were likely in circulation in England for 70 years. Bellar Mine witch bottles have been found dating from the late 17th century in London, but even more have been found in East Anglia, particularly in Suffolk, usually containing pins, not so common felt heart hair, thorns, and nail clippings. Some witch bottles from Suffolk included the usual ingredients along with shards of glass, brass studs, a fork, and wooden pieces used to make matches. Throughout the history, we find many recipes of how one might create a witch bottle, which I won't go over just because there is too much information and I'm trying to make this video as short as I can because I understand people don't have enough patience to watch a 3-hour video. Still, it's hard to explain history in 5 minutes. I will link the book that I enjoy reading before making this video for those of you interested in learning more about witch bottles throughout the history. So, witch bottles featured in two witch trials in 1682. John Butts was accused of striking Mary Farmer ill. A local cunning man advised the girl's parents to stop up her urine in a bottle and buried while burning her clothes to compel the witch to appear. John Butts appeared, fell to riding on the ground, making horrible sounds. It seems like the charm didn't work at the end because Mary soon passed away. 
A similar case appeared at the court of Oyer and Terminer in London. Jane Kent was accused of killing a five-year-old Elizabeth Chainlet. When her mother was also attacked, her father took the advice of a doctor and he boiled pipkin containing Elizabeth urine, hair, nail, parings, and other items. He claimed he could hear the witch outside screaming, but he never opened the door to see if she was there. The next day, both John Butts and Jane Kent were acquitted at trial. Then there is a local man that owned a horse that became uncontrollable due to witchcraft. So he buried a bottle of urine from the horse and the man, believed to be responsible, died of an inability to urinate. Witch bottles had become popular and accepted in many parts of England. And it seems that people with little medical knowledge believed that witch bottles were useful in alleviating illnesses. The 18th century. From many accounts, we know that people still used witch bottles at the beginning of the 18th century. After the last conviction under the 1604 Witchcraft Act, basically witchcraft is no longer associated with murder and destruction, but fraud and fortune telling. This still didn't stop people from believing in witchcraft, so people would still burn or bury witch bottles. The 19th century. In many areas, the belief in the existence of witches was still as strong in many areas, even though many generations of British citizens had never witnessed trials for witchcraft. People would also use often iron bottles in creating these witch bottles. Although many of these practices were successful, some of them were not. Bottles would blow up and destroy people's homes, so please don't put witch bottles on fire and always consider fire safety when working with it. Witch bottles were also used in love spells. We have one example in 1894. Lillian Hines was upset because her boyfriend took up with another woman in the same house. So two women, Mary Anne Smith and Mary Jane Pritchard, gave her a bottle containing red liquid. Lillian had to drop pins in that bottle and make her wish, which was to get her boyfriend back. Once the bottle reached 13 pins, the case reached to the magistrates and both women were fined and her boyfriend Ted Highway remained happily with Louisa Jones. The 20th century By the early 20th century, practices of the cunning folk were failing into abeyance. So we only find a few examples of witch bottles. There is this man that asked his barber for his hair. It was to be placed in a bottle with nail clippings and water on the fire at midnight to revenge a wrong done to him. In 1919, there is this woman who often boiled pins in urine in order to bring the man who was suspected of bewitching her garden. There is one case in which it seems that the bottle was used to curse instead of reverse one. In 1912, a fa farmer was very ill, but then he found a box sealed bottle containing pipes and a centipede under one of his apple trees. A cunning woman advised him to break it and bury it far away, and after that he had no trouble. But Britain is not the only place people used witch bottles throughout the history. There are many other accounts in other parts of the world, such as North America and Scandinavia. Today we still use witch bottles, although we might find some recipes adapted to our modern practice. For example, not everyone is comfortable working with bodily fluids, so they would use vinegar instead of urine and things like that. But I hope this video was useful and you learned something new today. If you would like to support this channel, I have my Etsy shop linked in the description box. I wish you a peaceful day and see you in my next one.